Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and today I'm going to install this 6-inch crown molding in this bedroom. I'll go through the rough measuring to order the material and price the job. Then I'll get the shop set up, and I will do a detailed measure and figure out the cuts that I'm going to make, and we'll go through the process from beginning to end. Typically when I'm doing a trim job or a crown job, I'm doing a, the big area, main area of the house in multiple rooms or the whole house. In this case, I'm doing this one bedroom and I actually only have two joints that I need to do in here, inside cope and outside miter. Uh, but those are the two most common cuts you'll make on any job. So hopefully that'll help take what some people think is a difficult molding to put in and it's actually quite simple if you know some basic steps. Uh, it's just as easy as putting in base molding. The hardest part is you're on a ladder rather than down on your knees. So the first thing I do when, when I'm called to do a trim job is I want to go in and do a quick measure to uh, figure out the material I need so that I can price the job. Now when I'm doing a whole house or multiple rooms, I'll just measure and get the total lineal footage and I buy this material in 16 foot goods and I will just add 10% then divide it by 16 feet so I know how many sticks and then if I'm a little bit over say you know eight sticks plus an eight footer I'll round it up to nine sticks and that'll give me enough material for the miters the outside miters which take more material and also for trying to splice on on studs and things like that so that 10 percent plus rounding up to the next full stick uh, is typically what I do in this case I have the one room, so I want to be very efficient uh, with it. I don't want to have a lot of waste. So I'll do a, a quick measure and then uh, figure out what I need. Obviously, tape measure, very easy to go around. We don't need to get up on a ladder um, and just uh, do quick measurements and, and write them down as I go. But if you've watched my other video where I talk about uh, my measuring techniques, I have a, a digital tape measure. And so this is just a lot quicker for me than pulling out a tape. So I'll start there and I want to go from this corner to that corner. So I just put it right on the back. And that's a 10 footer. And again, this is not the, the cut measurements. This is just for an estimate uh, and for ordering material. Okay, I've got those uh, quick measurements and it looks like what I'm going to need is, uh, you know, I've got sizes like 14 feet, 10 foot, 2 foot, 3 foot. So I just look at how they're going to work out into uh, from 16 foot material. And so I put this all together and I'm going to have four 16s and that'll leave me about uh, 6 feet or so of waste. That's before the cut. So probably a little less than 6 feet of waste. So that sounds pretty good. So I can figure out what the materials are going to cost how much I'm going to charge per foot to install and my method for charging I'm not going to give you prices here because it varies uh, from area to area and who knows when this video will be watched it might have changed but typically I have a lineal foot price and then I count every joint so inside miters outside miters and if I've got a wall that's over 16 feet I'm going to have to splice together some material so I would count that as a joint as well but in this case 16, I, every, the longest cut I have is 14, so I'm gonna, not going to end up any splices. I have only one outside corner, and then I have uh, five inside corners, and those will all be copes. So with that, with that information, the material I need, uh, those cuts, I will um, be able to give the owner a price. If he approves it, I can pick up the material and start the job. So the one other material that I want to get in addition to the crown is some backing material and uh, what I mean by that is I need to have something to nail the crown to in certain areas. In this house the trusses run in this direction which means the walls that run perpendicular the trusses will cross them and I can use a stud finder as I'm nailing things up and I can nail into the truss and then into the wall stud and get a, at a you know a good nailing every 16 inches or so. In the case where the walls are um, in line with or parallel with the direction of the truss, um, it, most of the time there's no nailing there. At the top of a wall, 
uh, the framer will have put on a nailer for the drywall, but it will only be sticking out about an inch. He sticks that out about an inch and a half, and then the drywall picks up a half an inch of that. And crown molding, because it goes on at an angle, the nailing is going to be too far out for that backing to work. Now, in some cases, uh, we'll find that in layout, there might be a truss, the bottom cord of the truss, close enough and right in the area to get it nailed to, but typically not. So I'll get a uh, solid wood member, like a one by four piece of pine, just inexpensive uh, lumber yard stock, not expensive stuff. And I will put that up here. I'll glue it, the back of it, and you'll see me do this. I'll glue the back of it um, with construction adhesive, and then I will nail it up to right to where the edge of the nailer is. And I'll make it so that it sticks out pretty close to the back of where the top edge of the crown is going to be. And that'll allow me to nail anywhere along. And then I can still nail into the studs. So if I check this wall here to see if there's any nailing, and sure enough, there's just that little one inch there, which isn't going to help me other than that's where I will nail the backing up to. So this is a 14 foot wall. So I know, again, I buy the, that material in 16 foot sticks as well. So I know I need one stick here. I'll check the wall on the other end because it also is running parallel with the trusses. And the walls that are running this direction, I don't need to bother with blocking. And this uh, short little section here, I will double check as well. But as it looks like, I'll need a 16 here. And then if I get a second 16, that'll cover both of those. The owner gave the go ahead for the job. So I'll go to the lumber yard, pick up the material, set up the shop and get started.